Hello, my name is Sarah Harper, and today I'm going to tell you a little bit about some work that I've been involved in at the Institute for Oceans and Fishery that really deals with how to fill fisheries data gaps, especially in small scale fisheries. Jumping right into some of the data challenges, the way that fisheries data is collected in many countries and contexts overlooks the many roles and activities that contribute to the fisheries related economy, often missing uh, data from small scale, informal, unpaid and part time activities that many, many people around the world do in fisheries. Um, national level data is also often aggregated by sector. So things like forestry with fisheries and agriculture, um, small scale with large scale sectors, fisheries with aquaculture. And this makes it very hard from a policy perspective to understand the contributions of specific subsectors and especially the small scale sector. There's also issues of comparability across scales and contexts with different definitions and methodologies used for data collection Standardized data uh, is definitely lacking and very much needed. So how do we overcome some of these challenges? Um, so I'm gonna highlight uh, a few projects that I've been involved with um, in the past, estimating small scale fisheries patches, uh, counting women, um, and then some of the methodologies used to estimate uncertainty. So small scale fisheries have historically been overlooked from a policy perspective. Um, and although there's increasing recognition of the contribution of this fishery subsector to things like food and livelihood security, uh, small scale fisheries are notoriously data poor. Um, there's considerable variability in what counts um, as fishing and how we define small scale fishing. And with no universally accepted or appropriate definition of small scale fisheries, each country really needs to come up with their own definition of small scale um, and what's appropriate to their context. Um, so with this greater emphasis on the importance of small scale fisheries efforts uh, to estimate the contribution of the subsector are mounting. Um, over the past 10 years, I've been involved with um, projects with two working groups at the University of British Columbia, the Sea Around Us project and um, the Fisheries Economics Research Unit, whose researchers, um, including myself, have developed global data sets with national level indicators of catch uh, and associated landed value, economic impact, employment, subsidies, um, all by the various sectors and subsectors um, of fisheries for all maritime fishing countries of the world. And this really um, drew on um, approaches that utilized all available data, um, often unconventional data sources, that were validated through expert opinion. Um, we used benefit transfer approach to fill data gaps. And this was very much an iterative process of um, estimating, verifying, and refining those estimates to come up with the best available estimate in these data poor contexts. So another major gap in fisheries data is the significant but often overlooked role of women in fisheries. Um, whose contribution to fisheries related economies are very much undervalued. Um, this is changing, um, however, it's quite slow. Uh, national level fisheries data rarely are rarely disaggregated by sex um, and are often missing the contributions by women, partly because the definition of fishing um, is very narrow and doesn't necessarily include all those activities, informal, unpaid, that women are involved in, especially in small scale subsectors. Some countries do a better job than others at estimating these data, um, but over, an overall effort is needed to include um, gender uh, and indicators um, that highlight gender and dimensions of fisheries in census data and other data collection methodologies. Um, this, um, as I said, is changing and partly this is because of the emphasis at the international policy level on gender equality. So this is through, for example, the small scale fisheries guidelines um, that have been developed by the FAO in conjunction with civil society um, and also the sustainable development goals that highlight gender or identify gender equality as one of their um, main goals, goal number five. And so these have really um, pushed for these dimensions to be added in a fisheries context. 
So finally, filling fisheries data gaps, as I briefly highlighted, often relies on a variety of unconventional data sources, which can inter introduce um, quite a bit of uncertainty into the estimates. So this uncertainty can be partially captured using methods that um, have been developed in other data poor contexts. So example, for example, in uh, estimating estimates around climate change, um, the IP PCC used a method to score the quality of data sources used, and this approach um, has been adopted in a fisheries context by the sea around us and other working groups, and it uses sort of a semi-quantitative approach of a, a four-point scoring system, which is based on the level of agreement and rigorousness of data sources, and then this score is translated into a metric that's used to calculate confidence intervals. Um, and in the examples that I gave above, we used a Monte Carlo simulation uh, to generate these estimates of lower and upper confidence intervals. And um, however, there's other approaches that could be used um, to do this type of thing. So there's just a few examples of where data gaps in fisheries exist and some approaches to filling them. Obviously, there's quite a lot more to cover here, um, but I'm looking forward to the discussion and some questions that will follow um, after the, the other two presentations. So thank you for your time. Thanks for listening, and I'll look forward to your questions in a bit.